Hello everyone and welcome back to the Jamzy Online YouTube channel. In today's video we're taking you through the entire process of grinding this 240 pound L10 Cummins crankshaft and you're going to want to stick around because the cleaning guy messed something up on this one. Going through figuring out my specs, figuring out what bearings I can get, figuring out if the bearings come in metric undersizes or inch undersizes because that does make a slight difference. Getting the diamond set up here because I need to dress the proper radius on the wheel that we're going to grind with. Now the bad part is is over the years I have acquired one more wheel than we have slots for in the cabinet here. So I have to roll this one out, lean it over out of the way, a little bit pops it loose off the taper. A wheel for an old man to lift. <laughs> a lot of responsibility for the cleaning guy. We'll get that on there, just exactly the right torque. We've brought the diamond out, we've traversed it across the wheel there, and now I need to bring it down so it's almost touching the stone. If you put a piece of paper between the diamond and the wheel, and I bring that down, and kind of keep feeling with the paper there. There it is. So it's just almost touching the wheel, but not quite. Got to get down before it fall down. So it's about one and three quarter wide. So you're just using the gauges. Yeah, to we've got a a radius gauge here to compare. I'm going to mount the dresser on there. Whoops. Just about drop the dresser. Drop the dresser. Was not anticipating that moving. We have to make sure we have enough distance between the dresser and the wheel. And I have cut this pencil to the distance that I use for my gauge. I thought the pencil would be more accurate than a tape measure. <laughs> Good old number two. So now, when I bring this, power this in, I know it will stop before I hit the diamond because I have made sure with my pencil gauge. Nice. So I brought it in, and I'm gonna feed in until I'm almost up against the wheel. I can see a little air gap between here yet. And you can see my diamond will cut a radius on there. I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do this because I'd really like to have some coolant on that, but it's so messy trying to do this with coolant, so I think I'm gonna do it without. Okay, let's fire the wheel up, see what happens. So why'd you do that? It's a little easier on the motor. Okay. When you start a big wheel like that, Help it get momentum. Yeah, help it get momentum up without drawing so much current for so long. Gives it a little time to cool the windings. Okay, there I'm just barely up against the side of the wheel. Now I'm going to go in until I just touch the face of the wheel. Okay, I can hear it. I just touched off on the face. So now, just like the other side, I want to dress that radius. So I'm going to flip this little knob down here, and that allows my diamond to rotate this direction. 
great. There I am, I just touched off on the side. There we have it. Wheel should have proper radius for both doing the rods and the mains on that crank. We need to get the chucks adjusted and mount the crankshaft, and that's going to take a little bit of time too. Yep. It really wasn't that bad yet. It had one, I think it was this one back here, that was, it's, it's quite grooved, yeah, real they're... rough. It just feels like a file when I run my fingernail across that. It hadn't spun the bearing or taken it completely out, but uh, it was definitely time that it needed some attention. And they didn't even know that was a problem with it because they were planning on just doing an in-frame overhaul and after they got into it and realized that uh, it was maybe worse than they thought it was. Dial indicator on here and we'll see if we can maybe tell how how warped this crank might be. Hopefully it's pretty close to being right on. And it does appear to be very close. I don't know if we've even got uh, two thousandths there. Uh, under two thousandths run out there so I won't need to do anything towards straightening this crank it'll grind okay just fine I don't think I could get any straighter than that if I tried Alrighty. but yeah that that journal is really rough it's not worn that much but it's sure rough huh you think it got dirt or something through it or I just... looking at the engine I think there was a lot of dirt went through that from somewhere because all of the bearings are scratched real real bad yeah how do you feel about all those math teachers who told you you wouldn't have a calculator in your pocket every day? <laughs> well, I was one of those nerds in high school that had the pocket protector and the calculator <laughs> strapped on my belt. So, <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> so before we move these chucks out, I always like to spray them down with a little bit of lubrication. Loosen them up here. And uh, I guess before I start here, Ridge should check the zero in the other axis. So I check here, make sure my gauge is zeroed. Checking this direction, I'm right on. Checking over here, I could stand to adjust that just a little bit. Each little mark on that would be a half thousandth. Okay, so now I have the chuck centered this direction with the machine, but now in this direction we need to move it out for the stroke length of the crank. Looking back at our specs here our stroke length is supposed to be 5.354 there's a machinist rule here to get us close. So that, that reads off the stroke or that reads off half stroke? This reads stroke length. Okay. This scale here is stroke length. That gets us close. And I also need to adjust the counterweights. Shine me a little bit of light down there so I can see. I don't know exactly where this is gonna come out. I'm just gonna take a guess. I'm gonna run them out to number nine on the scale. Uh, we'll be able to. They're on the time lapse. We'll be able to tell that once we get the crank in there. So we know our stroke length is three point, or excuse me, 5.354. Cut that in half for half the stroke length makes 2.677. 7577. So now this gauge here has to be set to that length. So I'll set it up here in the fixture. My micrometer out here. point six seventy seven. I'm going to transfer that measurement over here to the chucks. There we are on that one. So once again we got the chucks close using the scale on here and then at that point we get out the micrometer 
and set up the dial indicator here to transfer our measurement so we know our stroke length is exactly right. Now I'm going to go ahead and lock these down and they can still be fine adjusted a little bit even when I have them locked down but it just makes them a whole lot easier to move and a lot less wear on the slides and those chucks if you loosen them up to make the big adjustments. Okay. We're not too bad there. Need to open that one up a bit. So now let's try rotating this, but I'm not sure how far off I am on balance. And as you can see, it's still heavy. So it's heavy because it's off center because you're going to be doing the rod journals. Right. So there are counterweights under here that I can't see because our glass is so. I'm going to go on up to 10 and let's see what that feels like then. Do you know how heavy the weights actually are? No, I, I don't know what the weights are in here. Uh, evident, evidently enough to counteract the crankshaft. And if you get even bigger cranks in here, we have other weights that you actually bolt on back here on the back side of the okay. uh, chuck slides to counteract the weight. Yeah, see, now I've went too far. Now it's the other way. Now it's the other way. Awful close. I think we'll stop right there. If you look at that, there are none of those rod journals that are on center. We can't grind any of those. <laughs> so we're going to have to move the crankshaft into this position right here, lock it in place. So now when I roll this down and lock it in place again, if you'll notice on the chucks here, I have a jaw directly underneath because I'm going to loosen the crankshaft in here. So now that crankshaft is loosened in both chucks. It's just sitting there. There's nothing locking in place. If I get this V block out here, set that in here, then I rotate that crank in the chucks just a little bit until this V block, there. There, I brought it into the V. I can feel the feeler gauge. We're into the V on both sides. So now I can snug the crank down. Now when I rotate that crank, these two journals here should be on center. I can't quite go all the way around. My wheel's in the way back there. So by offsetting the chucks half of the stroke length of the crank, you now are spinning on center on those on two rod journals. On center on these two rod journals. They are in the center line of the, of the machine. And then to do the other ones, you'll be able to rotate the chucks. Rotate the truck, chucks 120 degrees, and I can catch the next two journals. And another 120 degrees, and we'll catch the last two. The last two, yeah. In fact, I'm probably going to start grinding on this one here. I'll rotate around and grind on it first. Always want to do your worst journal first. Make sure it's going to clean up the way you think it is. Should we go eat lunch? Let's eat lunch. Come back later. Okay. Okay, so we're back from lunch now. And if you remember, before lunch there, we had got the crank mounted in the machine and rough indexed in. I want to start with this journal. Obviously, that journal is not on the center line of the crankshaft grinder. I have to loosen both our chucks here and index this thing. Uh... Let's see, that'd be 240 degrees from where we were. There. So we've indexed crank around to where the journal that we're getting ready to start grinding on is on the center line of the crank machine itself. But we need to actually dial it in. So I'm going to put my little dial indicator on here. You can see we are way, way off. So I'm going to start position B and get that relatively close. 
and I'm going to go to position D. 180 degrees. You see we're almost a full turn of the dial off. So I'm going to split that difference with the fine adjustment here on the chucks. And now I'm going to see where we're at. Okay, from D to B, I'm almost exactly right on. My index is pretty close to being on, but this check now from, let's go from position C, see we're out on the needle, I'm going to go to position A, we're what, uh, four thousandths off on the stroke length. So to match, even though I set up the machine to what the crank was per the spec, it doesn't match what this crank was ground the last time. So we're going to try to bring that in. Uh, so that means I need to bring cranks this direction about two thousandths of an inch. Put my stroke length gauge on and I'm going to come up two thousandths of an inch. There's C. There's A. We're pretty much right where we need to be. Now let's just for fun spin this thing all the way around. And what you're looking at there is how far out around that journal is. Just for fun, let's move over to the companion cylinder. See we're on number five here. Number two would be the companion cylinder. And that journal is not worn as much. It might be to our advantage to actually be doing our uh, checking on that one. See what happens there. Yeah, we're quite a bit different on that one. Yikes. So let's see if that is in the index direction. So there's D to B. Yeah, our index is off just a little bit which is not uncommon on crankshafts. You see that all the time. But now let's see what our stroke length shows us. So I'm gonna go position C. So we're about 10 and a half on the needle there. Go to A, 11 and a half. So we could, uh, we could go back just a little bit on that adjustment I made earlier. Okay, I think we've got this dialed in as close as we can possibly be because what you're seeing there as far as needle movement is the uh, wear on the journal itself. Yep. But now I want to show you something. Big heavy crankshaft. How could that thing possibly ever move? I mean it's got to be super super strong in that engine. But watch that needle. All I got to do is pull back and forth on that crank and I'm tweaking it almost two thousandths of an inch there. That's what is frustrating when you grind a crank and you get one that is literally like grinding a wet noodle. It just goes all over the place. <laughs> you got a lot of experience with that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> so anyway, once upon a time an old guy uh, that was pretty well known in our area as being the guy to go to for grinding crankshafts. He actually uh, had a machine set up in our shop at one point in time before we bought our own machine and uh, ground cranks for us. And he used to put a little bolt, just a, a bolt with a threaded nut on there, in between the journals that you were not working on at that moment and not tighten this up super tight because you're going to tweak the crank but just enough to hold that in place on and put it in on every one of the journals where we're not grinding that you can possibly put a bolt in there like that and that helps keep the crank from flexing while you're grinding it gives it just a little bit of rigidity and I'm not tightening this tight I'm just putting that in there, snugging it up enough so it doesn't fall out. Yeah, I don't want those falling out while we're working, but I don't want them overly tight either. Didn't change anything on the crank. 
probably I can still flex that crank, but it does give me just a little more rigidity between each one of those journals. And one of the last things I'm gonna do, when we're grinding, say a light passenger car crank, I just leave the slides on the chucks snug tight. But with this heavy crank, I'm gonna go ahead and lock these bolts down because I don't want a chance of anything moving around on me. And with the added weight of a crank this size, it could move. And again, on this crank being heavier duty, I got out the heavier steady rest to help compensate for all that. We wanna make sure, again, with my trusty little pencil gauge here, that I have plenty of room between the journal and the wheel. So I can actually come in just a little bit here. And now I know that when I bring, when I feed the wheel in, it's not gonna crash because I have checked it with my gauge. Yep. And I wanna dress it with the diamond on the machine itself. I'll feed it down just a little bit till I hear it. There it is, just touched. I'm gonna give it just a teeny tiny bit more. Slow this down so we can get a real nice dress on the wheel. Feed back the other direction. And I believe we are ready to start grinding. But before we do that, I have not set up my Arnold gauge. So let's do that. Okay, there's a scale on here. Assuming we're gonna take 10 off, I'm just gonna roughly start that out just a little bit below 10. You can really see how out around that crank is. Ah. Let's put a little coolant on and I'm going to start feeding in until I start grinding. Usually you can hear a difference in the sound of the coolant when you get real, real close to the crankshaft. There, we just touched the crank. I can hear it, see a couple little sparks. I'm gonna set my wheel down here for about 10 thousandths of an inch. Kind of give me an indication as we go in. Now you can see already there, We've only taken, what, three or four thousandths off the crank, if even that much, and how much closer we are to being round at this point. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm gonna set this back on five. It doesn't necessarily have any meaning because I haven't actually mic'd anything yet, but it gives me in my mind somewhere to work from. So now I'm gonna back the wheel off, Move the gauge back, and I'm going to get out the mic, and I'm going to see where we are at. We are at 3.106. I'm going to write that down. 3.1063, let me check again. 3.106, yeah, I'm only actually going to go with 3.1063. The bearings for this are actually in metric sizes rather than inch sizes. So when we convert our uh, rod journal diameter to metric, go under 0.25 millimeter, and then I'm gonna go a couple of 10 thousandths smaller than the high side. I like to keep the cranks on the high side of spec, uh, but I need to be inside the high side. Anyway, our finished size is 3.1007, 3.1007 minus 
1063. We've got just over five and a half. Yeah, a little over five and a half thousandths to go, which is close to where I thought we were. Right. Off the gauges here. Turn on a little coolant here. Come back into that five where we were. And I'll go ahead and adjust it, that half thousandths. But now I'm going to sweep over and kiss the uh, side of this journal with this stone. There. I'm up against the uh, left side of that journal. So there on the right hand side of the journal, haven't drowned anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead and sweep over there. So you're just feeding in real slow. Yeah. The button moves two tenths. The button moves two ten thousandths. Of course, the wheel, I can move whatever I want, but when you get down close to the end, it's best to use the uh, button there so you can feed two ten thousandths of an inch at a time. Okay, I'm going to check my measurements again. That's showing I should have about two thousandths to go. O two eight. We got two and a tenth to go, which is good. Okay, so if we adjust this for two and a tenth, wasn't it? I've got quite a bit over on that side. Let's sweep over to the other side and get it a little closer. So I'm going to go clear over till I bump right there. And then we'll grind it down to within about one. On the steady rest there, you're tightening it up because, well, not necessarily. I mean, you're not tightening it I'm, up a lot, but you're just keeping. It, I'm keeping pressure steady on pressure it. against it. Because uh, as you grind, that steady rest actually is getting looser. Yeah. As material as, goes away. As the journal goes away, I have to keep feeding and steady rest in just a little bit more at a time to keep that same steady pressure under the crank. Yeah. Because people always look at it and they're like, "He's not even turning the knobs." Well, they they see me. It's just kind of a habit. I just kind of let my hand slip on the knob yeah. to keep pressure against it. But I'm not really, you can see, I'm not really turning the knob. I'm just I mean, it's kind of feeding a friction pressure. Feel. Yeah. Okay, so this side over here where I can measure, that's my problem is I'd like to measure on that side of the steady rest, but the radius gets in the way there. So I'm going to have to do all my measuring from this side. So I'm going to go ahead and move the wheel over to the right hand side of the crank, continuing to measure on this side where I can and bring it to final size and then I'll come back to this side and get final size. So again, I'm gonna go over till I bump the, till I kiss the cheek of that journal. I'm just right there. And you can see that needle ever so slightly waving. That might be one ten thousandth of an inch, if even that much. I wish it would run perfectly true, but a crank this size, things flex. We've done everything we can to reduce that as much as possible. Okay, I'm going to quit right there. My wheel is not quite as wide as that journal. 
So we have ground about three quarters of the width of that journal, but now I'm going to have to sweep back to the other side. Kiss off there. And that was not good. With about a thou to go, we ended up with chatter on the journal. Being this close to finished size, there was no salvaging it at 0.25 millimeter undersize, forcing us to move forward, taking all of the rod journals to the next undersize of 0.5 millimeter. Well, when I got up against the side and it was doing that thing, it ground all those flat spots. I can't believe it did that. We try to avoid mistakes, but they do happen, and we have no problem showing that with our audience. The customer in this case was already on the fence about grinding this crank or getting a new crank, and since we screwed up and had to take the rod journals to the next undersize, we're going to offer the customer that they can pay for this crank if they that decide to use it, or if they decide to go with a new crank, there will be no charge for this one. and a strong six. So you're a couple tenths under what we were shooting for, but you're still six tenths within yeah, spec. Yeah, we're still still within. I, I mean, our range of where we need to be is here. I wanted to be right here, but in reality, I ended right here. But I'm still above the middle yeah. on that range. Okay. We ready to try another one? Yep. Our index is off ever so slightly. How's that look? I'd say... Let's go with that. I'm going to say that's as good as it gets for a slightly worn journal, right? Yep. So basically the index is off from the companion cylinder, but I mean, it's so minuscule that it right. would be immeasurable. It, it, it will not be measurable on when the piston comes to the top. I don't think you'd even be able to measure the slight amount this is off. But if it was off a ton, then it would mean that one, you know, this one was hitting top dead center before the companion that's supposed to be at the same time. Right. right just to give some context yeah, to it's, what the index means. It's far enough off that you have to correct for it when you're grinding the crank to be able to make the crank grind and clean up. But it's such a small amount that by the time the crank puts the piston in the top dead center, it would not even be measurable. Yeah. you get same spot yeah. yeah came out same spot on that one so now we can uh, roll this around the index and uh, two, two more grind the next two journals okay so now I'm going to rotate the crankshaft 120 degrees come back against our stops here Does that make you nervous? Everything about this makes me freaking nervous. <laughs> now let's see how close we are on the index of this one. Pretty darn close. 
yeah, we're a couple thousandths out. That is incredibly close. I wouldn't need to, but I'm going to bring that in so we match what the crank was when it was new. We're pretty much just down to what the amount of wear it has at that point. Now you'll also notice that I'm always rotating the crank this direction. I did catch myself doing it the other way a little earlier. You may have seen that on the video. But a guy should always rotate the crank this direction when you're making adjustments here because if you would accidentally be too close to the wheel and you bring the crank around this way and it bumps the wheel, all it does is bump the wheel and leaves yourself a bruise on the crank where it ground a little extra. All, all you gotta do is go inside and change your underwear. Right, <laughs> but you go the other way and you're too close and with the direction the wheel is spinning, it will actually pull the crankshaft into the wheel and that's when things could get really, really ugly and you might need to change more than just your underwear. <laughs> because as you can see right now, when that swings around, those counterweights would hit the wheel yeah. if I wasn't in the right position. Those two done yeah so it goes a lot quicker once you get the first one dialed yeah. in basically yeah once you get that first one dialed in and kind of figure out your plan things start moving along a lot quicker it's pretty much like everything in the shop you spend way more time with all your setup than you do the actual machining right B 120 yeah so we're off a little bit there on the stroke length uh, again from the factory my machine should bring it right back into the same stroke we didn't change anything there With that, I think we're done with the rods. Alrighty. Feel better? I feel better. <laughs> 3.90 and a strong six tenths. That's about where all of them came out. Sweet. Now what do you do? Well, now we gotta break everything down and move the chucks back to center line and we'll be ready to grind the mains. You take all those out for yeah, we'll leave those out for grinding the mains. Oh, uh, you're put, oh. I'm probably going to put two steady rests under the crank to do the mains so those won't be required. Did we do all of them? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it didn't look that bad before, just scuffed up. Right. Now it looks the same, just not scuffed up. It was shiny before and it's shiny now. Well, I just rotated the crank so that one of the jaws of the chuck oh, right. is directly underneath the crank. Okay. And when I rotated 90 degrees out this way, it brought me a little bit farther away from the grinding wheel there. Okay. All it mounts to is a little bit more clearance. Uh, so when I'm lifting this big heavy crank out of there, I don't accidentally bump the wheel and break it. Okay, right. Cause you have to take it out to I have adjust to take, the yeah. stroke. I have to take it back out and bring the stroke back to center. Not cracked. No, it has a nice ring to it. I wonder how many people are getting. Jeez. 
wonder how many people will get that. I don't know. <laughs> and then we'll get in here, bring the counterweights back. Did you always have the air drill to do that? Uh, we figured that out pretty quick. <laughs> that was a lot of work running them back and forth uh, with the T handle. Yeah. And now we need to get those exactly on center. This fixture has been zeroed in so that we know it's dead center. So I need to come up there again. I need one more revolution here. Okay. Ah, bouncing side to side. Okay, there we go. And that gets us close. But now we need to put the, actually put the crankshaft in and then we'll indicate off the crankshaft itself. Okay, we'll go ahead and tighten the crank in the chucks now. Now I'll get my indicator back in here and we will indicate off of the uh, seal surfaces. So when the crank is installed, it should run true to the seal surfaces. Uh, so there's no problem with leakage and hopefully, uh, well, if we're true to the seal surface here, the timing gear should run true. If we're true to the seal surface back here and the flywheel goes on that same surface, the flywheel should run true. Just like before, I'm going to check from B position to A pos or to D position. So we're right on the four here. I go back to B and we're about three and a half. So I'm going to split the difference on that. Back to B, awful close. Pretty good. Now let's come in here to the A position. And if I bring it back to that same number, we should be awful close to being on center. Yeah, I'm going to call that good enough for right now. Let's go get this side dialed in. You said he might do a speedy sleeve? Yeah, he was talking about uh, wanting a speedy sleeve. I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't put one on the back end. I think that's plenty good yet. No reason to put a speedy sleeve on there, but that definitely has a, a bit of a low spot in there. Just all of a sudden it dips into a spot. Huh. Well, it runs pretty dang true for the rest of the Yeah, the, the rest of the way around it runs true and then you come to that one spot and it acts weird. I mean, we're less than a quarter of thousandths off center there and I, and I think that is it's just the fact that back end of that is not completely round. I mean, that is one of the constant struggles of our... Pull the lever there. Pull it. How much? Just like that. Just enough to make it move. I was going to say that's one of the constant struggles of our job is we're always working off... Okay, stop. We're always working off of something that's either worn out or something that the last guy potentially machined wrong or... Yeah, we're not working with brand new here. We're, we have to make the best out of what we've got. I think we got that about as close as that one's going to be, too. Now, go ahead and pull the engage the lever there so it keeps the crank turning. Okay. okay, so you can see how we're running here. Pretty darn close. Let's move over to the actual main journal surface. I'll catch up on the edge here where hopefully it's not worn. We've got uh, three quarters of a thousandths run out compared to the existing seal surface. And then of course here where it's worn, there's no telling what we'll have there. Not too bad, though, yeah. actually. Actually almost better there than where, uh, where I thought the surface was not worn. So now on the back end of the crank, we're pretty darn close there. Now let's go down to the main bearing surface, see what it does. Same way with it. It has that same kind of funny dip in it. Now, let's see how warped this crank is. We'll get in the middle here. 
That is really good. I was going to say, honestly, that all really of that good. looked pretty good. Yeah, that looks really good. I was afraid we'd have maybe two or three show up yeah. at this point, but no, you couldn't ask for that to be any better. And probably what we're reading there is the wear on yeah. the journal. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set up, I think, two steady rests in here, uh, start grinding, and see if we can make mains come out. Okay, so I'm going to start out with all my steady rests loose. So you're just changing the Arnold gauge so it'll read? Yeah, just changing it from our rod journal diameter to our main journal diameter. On the journal there because we're not going to have any water on there, any coolant on there for lubrication. So now I'm going to go over to the other journal. There we are grinding. Running nice and steady. Take, yeah. take that to five, right? Yeah. And I'm going to sweep over, find the radius of the crank. There, I'm just touching that radius. We go the other way. There's that one. So I'm going to go back to the first side. Right on zero. Steady as can be. Four, four, eight, zero. Two or three. Four, four, eight, zero, three. I'm right where I want to be. So these two journals are done. You're now supporting the crank there, 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 and there, because you've got these. Right, right. Okay. So there's plenty of support on the mains to keep it running straight. And we're ready to come in on this rear main. Not a lot of room on each side of the wheel. Makes me a little nervous, but we'll get it figured out. And we've put some color on there to make a little bit better, better visual for you. Is that grinding already? Yeah, that... that's already grinding. Okay. Yeah, that's taking it off. I mean, it goes away so fast you can hardly see it, but there's a few little scratches left in there. Yep. And let's see how much we've taken off at that point. Uh, about two thousandths. Today a new day? It's a new day. Today's a new day. We spent a uh, good deal of time yesterday grinding this crank. Uh, took much longer than normal since we had to, uh, or since we were filming it at the same time. So anyway, we're ready to polish it now. In essence, we are going to polish the journals in the opposite direction of what they were ground. You may not realize that just looking at this, but the grinding wheel ground the journals and pushed all the burrs in this direction. Pushed them around that way. When we get ready to polish, we're going to put our belt on here and the belt is running and even though the crankshaft is turning this direction, the belt is running the opposite direction fast enough that it will pull all those burrs, break a lot of them off, smooth it out, and any that is left are laid over this direction so when this is in the engine running, the burrs are not digging into the bearings. And we're, and we're when you're saying burrs, we're talking microscopic. We're talking we're not, microscopic burrs. We're not talking anything. It's not like you could put your finger on here and it dig into your finger. No, you can't feel <laughs> it. You can't see it. It's microscopic. But the bearing material can feel that. Yeah, the bearing knows. So anyway, I guess we're ready to get started here. Yep. The bearings are smarter than we are. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to put on my dust mask because this does make a little bit of abrasive dust and 
and uh, iron metal dust. to the snout there so you can polish this yes. surface and this surface. Yes. Even though that one. That one's probably gonna need a speedy sleeve on it, wear sleeve put back on it. But regardless, we need to clean it uh, get the rust and everything off of it so it'll be clean when he does get ready to put one on. This one back here, there's a little bit of wear on there, but I wouldn't uh, put a sleeve on it. I think it'll be better just the way it is then. Do you ever chuck sleeve. inside? Yes. With these jaws, I can't, but I do have a jaws different set of jaws on here that you can chuck from the okay. inside out. With that, we have a freshly ground and polished L10 Cummins crankshaft at 0.25 millimeter under on the mains and 0.5 millimeter under on the rods. Be sure to drop a comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.